Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert, Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. Listen, it feels really good. I'm back home at my home studio, got my team in here, and I've just been on an epic adventure. And of course, I've brought back some valuable gifts for you. We've already put out a couple of the interviews that I had the opportunity to uh, be a part of while I was out on the road. So Shalene Johnson, Lita Lewis, We've got another one for you today, all right? I jumped on a plane and flew out to NYC to interview one of the greats walking around on the planet. So, But it also got me thinking about what really constitutes somebody being world-class at what they do, right? Not just good, not even great, but world-class, right? Absolutely phenomenal at what they do. And I've had the opportunity, the great blessing and opportunity to be around some of the truly world-class individuals in their field. And those are the people that I strive to bring for you here on the Model Health Show. And so there were three specific things that I've noted as being a consistency with all of these different individuals. One of those things is study, all right, study. They didn't just wind up being who they are on accident, all right? It wasn't some just natural talent. They study, they actually invest in their field. They make sure that they stay up to date and on top of the latest research. They make sure that they're cultivating an attitude of being a lifetime student, right? So if there's anything in your life that you want to be great at, that you want to be world-class at, then you have to make it a study, right? This doesn't just happen on accident. If you want to be absolutely phenomenal at your finances, you have to make it a study. Most of us just kind of, we grow up, our mom gives us like $5 and we figure out money from there. Right? It's just like a trial and error situation versus like, let's learn about money. Let's get some books about it. Let's listen to some uh, interviews and some lectures by people who are absolutely world-class at that. Same thing with relationships, right? Same thing with obviously with health and fitness. And that's what we really focus on here at the Model Health Show. So study. If you want to be great at something, you have to make it a study. If you want to be world-class, you have to make it a study. Another thing, so that's one. Another thing is this really amazing focus that I'm noticing in all of these world-class individuals. They have this really powerful sense of focus that they bring to their life. So again, they didn't achieve what they have on accident. They are focused, they are, they are crystal clear on what they want, what they're about, and they're continuously focused on moving in that direction. All right, so ask yourself, do you have a sense of cultivated focus in your life, right? Do you Are you crystal clear on what you want? Are you focused on that and moving in that direction? If not, then good news, number one, we do have some episodes of the Model Health Show that focus on that. I'll put in the show notes for you. All right, so check the show notes. But outside of that, I promise you, once you get clear on what you want, there are actually parts of your brain, the reticular cortex, reticular activating system, just to name a few, that are primed and constantly scanning your environment, scanning the database to bring you closer to the things that you're focused on, right? You've, you've had this happen before, you know? Maybe you, you, you see a new car that you really want, right? You're into this particular car, and all of a sudden you start to see the car everywhere. You know, it's, your reticular activating system is now primed and looking for this, scanning your environment to see this car, right? Or if you get a new car and you have that same thing happen. It's just like, it was probably there before around you, but your attention wasn't focused on it. So we don't wanna just use this gift that we have randomly. So get focused on what you want, because truly this is what world-class performers are doing. They're focused and they're moving in that direction. Third thing that I'm seeing is a consistency with these great individuals who are just absolutely world-class at what they're doing. And this is one thing that can get glanced over. They have this really powerful expression of giving, right? This is something that I've seen over and over and over again. These are some of the most giving, kind-natured human beings, and it's not an accident they're in this position. We think there's this psychological fear that we have, just kind of this lower level. You know, we have the three brains that kind of evolved on top of each other, right? We've got the amygdala, right? This kind of reptilian brain. We've got the limbic brain. We've got the more evolved prefrontal cortex. That amygdala can hijack your life, and tell you, don't give them anything, what are you gonna have left, right? Scarcity, right? Hoard, hold on, don't give. You don't wanna be left out in the cold. And that is totally counter to what human nature is, right? Ultimately, as we evolve, there, of course, there is a level of um, survival that we need to be aware of. 
But most of us are not in a state that we need to be concerned about survival. It's more so how do we work together as a community to make sure that we're not just su surviving, but we're thriving, right? And so again, uh, I love the quote from Booker T. Washington that says, those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. And these world-class performers have discovered this and they give in a big way, right? And so, and that is to speak this, the person we have on this episode fits all three of those categories in a really powerful way. And I can't wait to share this with you. Um, but I want to share something with you that I've been studying today. Funny enough, I was just going through and looking at this. Have you heard of a mushroom called turkey tail? Turkey tail. Now, this is kind of a funny name, but it's because it kind of resembles what a turkey tail looks like. But the scientific name is Tremades versicolor. All right, Tremades versicolor. What a cool name. And here's the thing. In studying turkey tail, and I've, I've been studying turkey tail for probably, I don't know, somewhere around five, six years, I've been aware of it and kind of looking into the data occasionally, but today I did a deep dive. Turkey tail has been found to have incredible anti-tumor properties, antiviral, antibacterial, and also it's really a great antioxidant as well. Specifically, what's being studied, one of the compounds from turkey tail is something called polysaccharide K or PSK. And it's derived from this particular mushroom. It has actually been approved as an anti-cancer medication in Asia, all right, certain parts of Asia, this is again, something that's prescribed, simple extract from this medicinal mushroom for treatment for cancer, specifically stomach cancer. Now here's a study, 2013 researchers in China conducted studies on turkey tail and found that it had anti-ulcer effects and it could selectively inhibit gastric cancer cells viability, all right? So them being able to thrive those cells, but here's the thing, I don't want you to miss this, selectively inhibits cancer cells. So unlike conventional methods of cancer treatment that kill all cells, right? If you think about something like chemotherapy, which is very effective at killing cells, but it also kills cells that you don't want to die, all right? And it's why we see folks with just having destruction happen to their immune system and eventually seeing recurrence of cancer because their immune system has been hit so hard. And it's basically, a, we'll try, we'll see if you can outlast this therapy, right? If your good cells can outlast us killing your bad cells and your good cells. And it's a very extreme method, but it's also, again, it's, it's effective, but maybe there is something better. And so even adding this to the mix, research is indicating that turkey tail can help to regenerate and rebuild the immune system for folks who have gone through chemotherapy. So it can even be something that's a compliment. All right, so, and that's just one thing that I looked at today. Another compound in turkey tail, which is polysaccharide peptide or PSP, was found to prevent the replication of the HIV virus. Wait, what? Did You gotta let that sink in, all right? Found to prevent the replication of the HIV virus. Unbelievable, right? This is, it's, it's incredible, you know? And again, a lot of folks don't realize that there's about 30% of our medications that, you know, conventional prescribed drugs are actually derived from funguses, all right? Mushrooms are just in that category. So medicinal mushrooms, what's so great about this is that we've got thousands of years of documented history oftentimes in, you know, systems like Chinese medicine. But today we're utilizing our new technology to affirm what has already been known and documented for, you know, centuries. So really, really awesome. And now the reason I've been really digging into the literature with turkey tail is that I've added it to my daily regimen recently in the form of a, a delicious chai latte. All right, chai latte. I don't know if you're into the chai, but I'm a, I'm a chai guy. All right, I'm a chai guy for sure. So chais, you know, we've got some of the kind of ancient Ayurvedic principles incorporated there with the cardamom and the cinnamon, all these things that are proven to aid in digestion, but also very, very strong antioxidant foods, very high on that ORAC scale. But combine that with turkey tail and reishi, and this chai latte comes from Four Sigmatic. All right, Four Sigmatic. When I got back from my long trip, you know, just all these different cities in a couple of weeks, 
my chives were there waiting for me. Brand new product, and it has been going crazy. People are absolutely loving it. So it makes it easy to get those medicinal mushrooms into your body. And here's what's different about what Four Sigmatic does versus Company X, because there are a lot of different supplements out there that have turkey tail. Four Sigmatic does a dual extraction. They do a dual extraction. So they're doing a hot water extraction and an alcohol extraction to be able to actually pull out the PSK, the PSP, the, the terpenes, the beta-glucans, all the different things that using only one extraction method, you're not gonna get everything. And that's why I absolutely love them so much. And every day, I mean, you should see my cabinet stocked up with Four Sigmatic stuff, all right? But I want you to check out the new chai latte and take advantage of the turkey tail. By the way, best way to do it, unsweetened vanilla almond milk with the chai latte from Four Sigmatic. Just throw that out there, all right? So make sure to check that out. And also, by the way, because it's just flying off the shelf right now, uh, also they have turkey tail included in some of their superfood mixes. So these are like, some of them are like mushroom complexes that, you know, you can take a teaspoon, add to your coffee, add to your, you know, your lattes or, you know, your smoothies, things like that. So you can check it out as well. So that's foursigmatic.com forward slash model. And you're gonna get 15% off all of this stuff. Every single thing there that Four Sigmatic carries, you get 15% off, all right? So it's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model, 15% off. I already went through the benefits of turkey tail. Don't get me started on Chaga. Don't get me started on Rishi and his uh, clinically proven benefits for improving your sleep. Just amazing. Make sure to check them out, foursigmatic.com forward slash model. And on that note, let's go ahead and get to the iTunes review of the week. Another five-star review titled Game Changer by Stephanie2828. The Model Health Show has completely changed my life. Sean discusses topics that are relatable to everyday life and learning these small hacks changes your everyday routine. Sean brings experts from every topic on the show, ranging from health, exercise to sleep, and healthy relationships, foods, motivation, and work. He's also hilarious. This is one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to daily. Everyone from students, adults, and even children can relate to this podcast. Can I give this podcast six stars? Thank you so much for leaving me that review. That is so awesome. Six stars. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone, thank you so much for heading over to iTunes and leaving me a review. I truly, truly, truly do appreciate that. And if you've yet to do so, it's okay. All right. You can do it now. All right. You can pause this, go and leave a review come back. All right. I appreciate it immensely. So if you've yet to leave a review over on iTunes, please pop over there and leave a review and let everybody know what you think of the show. And on that note, let's get to our special guest and topic of the day. Our guest today is the incredible Dr. Mehmet Oz. He's an MD and cardiothoracic surgeon. He's won eight, eight daytime Emmy Awards for the Dr. Oz show. He's a professor of surgery at Columbia University and directs the complementary medicine program at New York Presbyterian Hospital and performs more than 50 heart operations each year. And in addition to his new book, Food Can Fix It, Oz has written seven, again, seven New York Times bestselling books, including You, The Owner's Manual, You, The Smart Patient, You on a Diet, and You Staying Young and the award-winning Healing from the Heart. And he's somebody who's an absolute pioneer in this field. And uh, I've learned some things from Dr. Oz way, way back at the beginning of my career. And it's just been somebody, again, he abides by those three things. He lives by those three things that really constitute when somebody is doing things at a world-class level, the study, the focus, and the giving. And I think you're really gonna get a lot out of this interview. So with no further ado, Let's go ahead and kick to this interview with the one and only Dr. Oz. How you doing today? It's always a pleasure to be with you. It's totally my pleasure. Totally my pleasure. So I want to start with your superhero origin story. All right. What got you interested in health and fitness in the first place? So my, when I was about seven years of age, my dad, who was a surgeon, uh, would start taking me to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to an ice cream shop, Peterson's Ice Cream, in Wilmington, Delaware, where we were, we were living. And I was waiting in line, and the kid in front of me, who was probably 10, which at that age is a big difference, three years of difference, because I'm seven, he's 10, uh, was waiting for his ice cream. My dad said, what what do you want to be when you grow up? And the kid said, I don't know, I'm 10. (laughs) It's a reasonable answer. My kid gets his ice cream, moves along innocently. My dad looks at me and says, I never want to hear you give that answer. 
He said, I don't care if you change your mind a hundred times, but I want you always to know what you want to do so you aim in the right direction. And I so he asked, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I, I sort of like what you do. I like the fact that you, know, you get to go in there and take care of people. And I still remember being surprised that my dad, who's a surgeon, would put needles in people, which was the worst thing I could imagine. Mm. And they'd be happy. Mm -hmm. They'd thank them. So how bizarre is that, that you could do something that's on the surface harmful, but deep down you know it's what needs to be done, and so is the person you're trying to help. And the the honesty of that, the integrity of that, really captured my attention. So I, I told my dad I wanted to be a doctor, and I just never changed my mind. Wow. It did impact my life in many ways. I played sports through college. I, I studied my body to, to be able to play sports. I got smarter and smarter as I realized certain things would make me yawn on the sideline, mm -hmm. and other things made me a, a tiger. And then I began to realize it wasn't just about genetics. There were other things that I could do to hack my body to perform at a higher level. Yeah. But it was, when I went to med school, I learned a lot about why those things worked. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize as I advanced in my life that I was helping people in the ways I thought they needed to be helped, but it was a little too little too late. And it was my wife, really, who was the catalyst, who would pester me. It's the last yeah. voice I heard falling asleep at night, <laughs> saying, you know, people aren't getting the message because you're not giving it to them. Doctors aren't giving America the message that we need to hear. You're doing your best in your offices, but they need to hear it before they come to your office. Yeah. So that really sinks in. And that's why it's dedicated my life to what we're doing now. Absolutely. So was this kind of the the catalyst for the you books? Yeah. You, the owner's manual? That was my first introduction to you. <laughs> so I was just fresh out of college listening to the audio book in my, in my Ford Explorer so and just fascinated. <laughs> so as you drove along your Ford Explorer, what you were hearing was a... Uh, a vision that actually my Lisa, my wife, had uh, articulated that took me a little while to get it, but when I finally got it, uh, and it got on my vision board too, it made a lot of sense. And there's a there's a, sir, a doctor named Mike uh, Roizen who's yeah. at the Cleveland Clinic, and the two of us started collaborating because I had made a series of shows for Discovery Channel called Second Opinion. And my thought was, everyone ought to get a second opinion. And that can be actually a second opinion from someone who's knowledgeable about health, not necessarily another doctor, because yeah. you want to triangulate decisions you make in your life. Exactly. And the this, this series had run, and we thought, there's so much stuff here we got to talk about with America. And the problem is people, all, they see health content is sour and dour. Everyone thinks that, that if it's healthy, it can't be good. I, I mean, I'll give you an example. Companies that make food will often not, not even if they make it healthier, won't admit it. Because they assume mm, right. you'll think it doesn't taste good anymore. Yeah. And so that we've, we're in a society where people will hide the good stuff almost because they don't want to turn you off. Now, that doesn't have to be that way. I mean, I love understanding my body. I, I adore that I can change it for the better. I think people like that when they can finally get past the fear of not understanding what's really happening. And so we started to say, okay, how do you best do that? Well, the most you know, the intricate things you have in your life your electronics, your refrigerator, your car, they all have owner's manuals. Yeah. Except you. Yeah. And then we thought, well, you know, if we just say it's about you, well, you can't duck. And it's not the, I'm pointing at you, blaming you, you. It's the fonts. Hey, how about you, man? What's, where are you with this <laughs> thing? How come, you know, why aren't you showing up in your own life? And Mike Roizen's ancestor, relative, had made the U.S. Army posters with the guy, you know, Uncle Sam pointing at you, the recruitment mm, posters. Wow. And so it was that same finger. So we took that hand, yep. pointing at you, tried to, it, it so much went into this, I can't <laughs> tell you, trying to adjust your hand so it's not a accusative hand, yep. but a supportive, hey, come on over here, guy. We can do it together. And that was really about you. Yep. Uh, the whole mantra was be part of us, all of us, because we all do it together. And if you come along with us, we'll make something really big happen. And that made, you know, the first book was called You, The Owner's Manual, because we figured the most valuable thing you own, that dwarfs in importance, anything else you ever got from your parents, your body, yeah. ought to have an owner's manual. Absolutely. So you actually know how to use it. Ah, man, I totally agree with that. And I think it's one of the greatest gifts that you can have is to understand this amazing body that you live in. Like, we're, we're not leaving here with anything, right? And all this, like... It's kind of like a little morbid, but somebody's going to live in your house one day, all right? <laughs> right? But your body is the one thing you own. Like, this is your your home. And the more that you can, just basic stuff, know about taking care of your body, it can empower you. But, so, but for a lot of people, it's an away game, right? They, they don't really understand yeah. their body, so they're never quite comfortable in it. Right. And they and, outsource it. Exactly. Yeah. And then, then you get into problems because then it's really hard to put the pieces together. And you don't trust the the, the, the deepest, most valuable judge your own 
instinct. Mm -hmm. Do you feel good with that or not? And I think not trusting that becomes a problem. That's why people, I think, will have trouble with diets. You go on a diet that's so miserable, you can't possibly do it your whole life. Mm -hmm. I mean, your life will seem longer, but it won't be longer. Right. Uh, and so you, you want to get people to do what they love doing and just happens to be healthy. And that's why I, th I think thin people who are thin stay that way. I mean, I'll give you an example. I, I, I've been r roughly the same weight. I actually lost a little weight since I was playing football in college just because I had more muscle now. Now I'm a, little, a weakling. <laughs> but the, but my, my, my fat content is probably not all that different. I love nuts. I mean, I adore them. And I used to always feel badly when I was eating nuts because I knew they were fattening. Yeah. And I was eating something that was going to make me fat, but I never seemed to get fat. Now, go figure. And then I finally started to research it. It turns out every study ever done on nuts shows that people who eat nuts actually lose weight or stay the same. They don't gain weight. Yeah. Then I got to thinking, well, why was that? It's fat. Right. If any fatty things make you fat, then why is it making me fat? And I, be, I had the epiphany. I think everyone sort of acknowledges now, and I don't know why I was so late to come upon it, yeah. that the body's not counting calories. Your brain doesn't care about calories. It cares about nutrients. Yeah. Give me the stuff that I need to live my life. And if it doesn't have a lot of calories or, or empty calories, you'll be fine. And that, I think, look at fat, a whole fat milk versus skim milk. Same kind of battle. Now, if you're not going to drink milk at all, I get it. That's okay. But if you're going to drink milk, there's no reason to torture yourself with skim milk. Mm -hmm. Because I've never seen a single bit of data showing that it helps you lose weight. Because yeah. your, your body wants that healthy fat that comes along that the fat that's acceptable that comes along with, with, uh, with milk. So why not give it to yourself? Right. And there's also there's a problem with semantics. You know, we believe that fat, F-A-T, in food ends up as fat, F-A-T, on our bodies, yeah. which it just biochemically doesn't work that way. Yeah. That's like thinking if you eat blueberries, you're going to turn blue, right? It just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And so also one of the other things that I first learned about was from you was leptin and ghrelin. And I think it was you on a diet, maybe. That's, that's it was right. in that book. Again, in Automobile University learning about this stuff. But give, give it the subtitle. <laughs> we used to laugh so much. That was the, 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 the other thing about health is it actually is fun. So the, sub, the book was called You on a Diet. The subtitle was The Owner's Manual to Waste Management. Mm. Now, there was a lot of double entendres there. Waste yeah. was actually W-A-I-S-T. It's right. your waste because not your weight. Actually, it's your waste that causes the problem. And just to remind everybody, you want your waist size to be less than half your height. So, so five, nine is five, five times 12 inches is 60 inches plus nine is 69 inches, divided in half, 34 and a half inches. So your waist size, now it's, you're, you're, you're slim, so you're, you're like a greyhound here, but your waist <laughs> size can be less than 34 and a half, but it can't be more than that yeah. without starting to run into problems of, with metabolic syndrome, with diabetes and blood sugar uh, and uh, blood pressure and the like. But that, those kinds of math equations became pretty helpful. But I'll never forget the first paragraph of the book. We, were, we would write these things in, these, in a writing group. So me and Mike Royzen and a guy named Ted Spiker, who's a brilliant writer. And we would all sit for hours and hours on Sundays. Every Sunday for years, we'd write these books. And by the time we were done, we had, I think we had eight New York Times bestsellers. Uh, just because just they were so much fun for us to write. That's yeah. fun for the, for the reader. But uh, we were right. And the, and the opening line became, why is it that so many of you reading this book right now can be seen from Google Earth? <laughs> <laughs> and I know it sounds mean, but it was poking a hole in that veneer we have about this. The fact of the matter is, if what we were doing was working, it would have worked by now. True. So we need to trust you, the reader, to help figure out what works. Yeah, and that's what it's really about. Again, it's very empowering. And uh, one of those things, it kind of goes back and connects with when you're talking about uh, eating nuts and how it affects, it's the nutrients involved and how it affects leptin and ghrelin. So again, learning about those things first from you, can you talk a little bit about the role that leptin plays and ghrelin plays? So leptin is like a leprechaun. Think of it that way. Easy to remember. It's a, a, a hormone secreted actually by fat cells that tells your body, I am here. I'm, you got me covered. There's lots of extra fat here. You have lots of calories stored up in cases of famine. You don't have to go out and find some more food. Because remember, there's a benefit to fat being stored, right? Our ancestors would be, would be able to uniquely store fat, especially in the omentum, in times of feast, when we had lots of food, and summertime, so that in the times of famine, the long winter, because winter was coming, mm -hmm. uh, and you'd be able to survive it. And our ancestors who didn't have the ability to store fat, they stayed like gazelles all year long. Guess what happened to them? They died. Because when you had a famine that was extended, they didn't have fat stores. Most of us have 100,000 calories of stored calories. That's a lot. Yeah, it's, which is, it's a lot, and it's more than you need, but it makes sure you're not going to die. 
You can go a long time with those fat stores. So it, fat is uniquely capable of storing calories and it doesn't burn those calories, which is a problem today because you store the fat, doesn't actually burn off any calories. So there's no, there's no metabolic furnace. Unlike muscle, when you build muscle mass, even when you're not exercising, it's burning off your calories. That's why young men can stay thin and it bothers the women because they don't have the muscle mass. But you know, as we get older, we lose that muscle mass and men actually are fatter than women in America today. So ghrelin, the other hormone, because the yin-yang, everything in the body is pretty much balanced. So leprechaun leptin is saying, hey, I got you covered. Don't eat any more fat. You know, nothing else needed. Ghrelin is the hormone secreted by your stomach that says, oh, I'm really hungry. Like a gremlin. Because it feels short-term hunger pangs and will tell you to eat. So one hormone says eat, one says don't eat. You need to balance them out. The problem with dieting in general is there are a dozen redundant systems to weight loss. A dozen. I mean, there are only two to make you breathe when you go underwater. So how many of you can hold your breath indefinitely underwater? It's hard, hard to do. And that's because of those darn biologic systems. So the biology of blubber is a redundant system to make sure that you will eat because there's no survival benefit to starving yourself. So you really can't force that to do anything. You can nudge it. Mm-hmm. And most of the hacks that you and I both speak about and other folks who, are, who spend time in this area are designed to do just that, to take your normally existing biology and push it in the right direction. And I'll give right. you one good example. Ghrelin, when secreted, makes you feel hungry. And when you eat, it takes about 30 minutes for the ghrelin levels to fall back to normal. So there's two important observations here. The first is that it takes 30 minutes, which means if you sit down for a meal and you're hungry, you're gonna eat three meals because you can eat a meal in 10 minutes and you're not gonna feel full till you finish the third meal because that's how long 30 minutes is from when you start and you've eaten too much. And we've all had that moment where you said, oh my goodness, I really I really ate a lot. I didn't think I was that hungry. So if you a half an hour before a meal can eat some nuts, piece of fruits, anything, any calorie, I can, at that point, I don't care if it's a candy bar. A half an hour before a meal, put something that's nutritious in your body. When you actually sit down for the meal, you won't be quite as hungry. And that's a real trick of people who keep their weight stable. They're never truly hungry. Hmm. And the second big takeaway is ghrelin, as I mentioned, is a hormone that's stimulated by your stomach when you're hungry. When you eat, you feel really good because you've satisfied that pain. If when you eat, you don't feel good, but you rather feel relief, that's not true hunger. That's, 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 that's actually addiction. And so when your addictive feeling is wearing off, if, like when you do drugs, People who do drugs don't feel good. They feel relief from the pain they were having when they didn't have the drugs in their body. So differentiate true ghrelin-related hunger, where you feel good when you're done eating, from the withdrawal from an addictive process like wheat or sugar that your body just couldn't cope with. Wow, that's fascinating. So folks who tend to do great with their weight are never really hungry. That's a powerful statement because we mostly believe that if you're not hungry all the time, you're not doing it right. And it's really the complete opposite. And it's been shown over and over again. And the longest lived populations of the planet have a tradition of only eating to about 80% full. But they're not hungry. They're Mm -hmm. okay. Your latest book is called Food Can Fix It. So I would love to know from your perspective, what is it about food that it can do so much good in our bodies? What is it? If you understood the subtlety of how the liver could metabolize everything from medications we give you to the foods that we uh, eat ourselves, you'd be shocked. The liver is the biggest organ of the internal organ of the body. Second to the skin, by the way, it's the biggest organ. It's gargantuan, fills up the entire right upper quadrant of your stomach. Uh, it's the filter of the body. It's a detoxifying organ. And all the nutrients we eat are pretty much are metabolized in the liver. And it's either turned into really good stuff that you need to run all the systems of the body, or it's turned into fat and you get foie gras for liver, basically. People who are overweight, that's actually my biggest fear usually because the fat builds up in the liver, you don't know it, and some of those people get cirrhosis of the liver. But if not, they end up with other problems with the liver's ability to just detoxify your your life. And this is, we know this from the the, the liver's ability to detoxify chemicals like the pharmaceuticals we give you. We have to study it quite meticulously. It took a long time to understand how a liver can metabolize a piece of fruit or broccoli or raspberry. Because that's not stuff that is that easy to do. And there wasn't a lot of money invested to try to figure it out. So all the things your mom was saying about food, that she learned because her mother told her and thousands of years of human history reinforced were true, are now finally, literally over the last couple of years, being proven to be uh, effective. And it took us that long to do this subtle research required to figure it out. And I only bring that up because I wrote Food Can Fix It after taking a, a decade hiatus writing books. 
a decade because I didn't feel compelled to say anything. But as I learned more, and much of this was research gathered by my team on the show about exactly how food affects our health, I thought it was the right time to put it into a book that was accessible, understandable, uh, and actionable. So you could actually figure out, okay, those foods make sense in this setting. If I have a headache, do this. If I've got um, uh, uh, weak muscles, do this. If I have no energy, do that. If I want to get my blood pressure down, here's another game plan over here. This might help my eyesight, that'll help my libido. All that becomes part of a bigger story of tuning up your body. And I just wanted to give you the data and again, in a fun way, so that you could use it. And a lot of recipes to make sure you could actually take advantage of that information. But you gotta try it on yourself. There is no one size fits all solution to weight or to pain management or to energy, et cetera. And those are important observations for us all to agree on because otherwise you, you try one thing that doesn't work, you figure nothing's gonna work. If you do Google, and I'll challenge the, 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 list, the listening audience, go into your, your browser, your Google browser, and write in, why am I? That seems like an existential question, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, your right. grandmother, well, you know, she'd have an answer to why am I. You might ask her why. It's a deep stuff. Yeah. Well, guess guess what? It'll auto-complete in, in your browser. Why am I so tired? Mm. Do it right now. It's shocking. That is the number one question we're asking. And if you want the answer to why you're so tired, you go to things that are fundamentally designed to make sure we're not tired. There are certain foods that make it easier for you to feel energized. Caffeine is a little bit of a lie because right, caffeine just withdraws money from your own energy bank. So mm -hmm. that's not there when you truly need it later in the day. Uh, in order to sleep better, which you're an expert on, you need to be able to eat the foods to get you there. Again, all the stuff you're saying makes perfect sense. It just took us a long time to prove it because yeah. we were more focused on how do you fix a gunshot to the heart, not how does broccoli get metabolized by liver into indoles, which it does, by the way, which are remarkably healing, support liver cell function, and that therefore help detoxify stuff that's going through your colon which is one of the reasons we think eating broccoli reduces colon polyps. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons why eating meat yeah. does the opposite. Now, we know the observation, but we're finally figuring out the science. Mm. Wow, this is profound. And it just made me think about, in the context of energy, you know, we, we've heard about this in school, ATP kind of being this energy currency of the body. It's not really in its active form until it's bonded with magnesium, right? So it's really MGATP. So that's kind of the active form of, of energy experience. And so guess what the number of mineral deficiency is in our country? It's magnesium. 80% you know? so, of us. Yeah, it's bananas. Yeah. And so folks are wondering, like, why don't I have energy and just basic nutrient deficiencies? And so this is a good segue into what are some foods to find it? You know, specifically, magnesium is one of the most important things for our heart. And you being cardiothoracic surgeon... Uh, and that kind of being your path, let's talk about some heart healthy foods. Well, magnesium, just to finish on that, we actually give magnesium to patients on the open uh, on the table. But during open heart wow. surgery, we use magnesium for a bunch of reasons. It's a, it's a stabilizer of membranes of cells, so it allows mm. us to predict how the heart's gonna function better. We use it to reduce arrhythmias, irregular heartbeats. That's one of the first things I give people when they start having palpitations. So there's many, and again, you say, oh, it's magnesium, oh, who cares? You know, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a drug, we use it. We give big doses of it. And it is a cofactor of a lot of other metabolic processes. So please don't underestimate the importance of some of this stuff. Omega-3 fats may be the single biggest underutilized tool we have. Omega-3 fats, which are found in cold water fish, and they're, they're there because they, they help the fish stay fluid and able to move in cold water. It's not an accident. That's why you know, these omega-3 fats are they're, they're liquid at room temperature. Mm -hmm. And they are fragile for that reason. And because they're fragile, food manufacturers can't add them to processed foods. They don't last. So again, a lot of the processed foods we eat, they extend the shelf life of the food. They don't extend human life. That's not their purpose. And if you want to eat omega-3s, you're going to have to take it either from where the fish get it from, which is algae. Fish don't make omega-3s. They eat them from the algae in the sea. So they're algae omega-3s, which is what I take. They're grown in huge vats in South Carolina. They're pure. There's no toxins in them. Um, they're, they're building blocks for your own body to make what you need. And the reason you need omega-3 fats, or you take fish oils or eat fish, right? Salmon, cold water fish, sardines, eat those things. Uh, young fish, so they don't have a lot of toxins in them. But the reason omega-3s are important is 60% of our brains are fat. We are truly fatheads. I think you all knew that probably, but mm -hmm. I can confirm it for you. And you want to make the membranes of the cells healthy. And omega-3 fats are flexible fats. They bend around a lot. That's how, again, the fish can move. So you want your brain cells to be flexible. Saturated fats are rigid, that's right, they're butter. I mean, it's, they're hard at room temperature. And in your brain, they're also sort of hard. So your brain cells aren't quite as flexible, which means they can't communicate with each other quite as well. That makes you less active 
and less able to adapt to the world around you. Mm. That's a problem because when you can't cope, that's stress. See, stress isn't something bad happening to you. Stress is not being able to respond to what happened to you. Mm. So if I can give you omega-3s and allow your brain to function, we know that it helps with IQ in children because that's why all infant formula in America is by law required to have omega-3s in it. And in countries where it's not required, we worry about kids because mother's milk has omega-3s. That's why moms get depressed. When moms are having a child, all the omega-3s go to the baby. The mother's brain doesn't have omega-3s, so she can't cope with the world, so she gets depressed. That's why we give omega-3 supplements and prenatal and perinatal vitamins to moms. But for everyone listening out there, if you're not pregnant or have an heart surgery, it still means you gotta have omega-3s. Right. It also helps with arrhythmias, which is why I like it for the, for the as a heart specialist. And it's a food. I mean, it, you don't, it's not rocket science. If you're not gonna get it in the food, take it as a supplement, but it's right there for you. And pretty comfortable advice. Yeah, that's so good. So omega-3s and specifically DHA, EPA, uh, ALA, the, the plant, form is a little bit, your body has to go through kind of a rigorous process to convert it. It's not that efficient. So I'm glad that you brought up eat fish and or fish oil, algae oil. There's marine phytoplankton, krill oil, lots of stuff to choose from depending on where your ethics lie. Um, but I do, yeah, definitely think it's super, super important. So thank and you. And the ALAs, that. as you know, are walnuts and on food sources, which I, I like too, because those are, you need those omega-3s too. It's not quite for what we were talking about. Yeah. So you also talk about flavanols. Um, so what exactly, first of all, what are they? And what are some of the foods we can find them in? So flavanols and a lot, like a lot of, let's take a step back. Um, plants to protect themselves have colors. It's not just an accident that you, all the colors of the rainbow reflected there. They all have different ways of protecting themselves against the sun. So when the sun hits a eggplant and the purple pigment is shown there, it reflects the, the, pink, the, the purple, it's protecting itself. Uh, carrots have orange, carotenoids protecting themselves. So all these different uh, colors are, are there because of very specific reasons. When you eat those colors and you get those flavanols, those antioxidant compounds that are the building blocks of plant protection, you're actually getting the plant's powerful protective tools to use yourself. And they work as antioxidants to resuscitate different systems within the body. And you want the, the cells, the mitochondria in the cells, which are the power plants, to be able to make energy, and they're gonna give off some toxic waste. You wanna right. be able to clean that waste up. That's not a bad thing. Right. That toxic stuff can be used to kill cancer cells too. Mm-hmm. So you just wanna be able to clean it up when your body wants to clean it up and let it go when your body doesn't wanna lose. When you exercise, you build up antioxidants. Infl- inflammatory compounds are released, which is a good thing. That's why you build bigger muscles. That's how you build up an adaptive ability. But you wanna quench that appetite with flavanols as well. So. All the colorful foods that you see in the produce stand that don't have food labels, because remember, if they don't have a food label, it's probably healthy for you, because <laughs> they don't have to put a food label on. Uh, those are all the ones you want to get in. And you can take them as supplements as well if you're not going to eat a healthy diet. I personally take a multivitamin pill daily, because I know that my diet's not always perfect, even though I'm pretty careful. And I know that I speak for most Americans, because 99% of us don't eat a diet that is either well-designed enough for our personal use or because the food itself has changed, no longer can keep up. Like an apple doesn't have the nutrients it had 100 years ago, just because of how we grow it. So as a backup plan, I think an antioxidant vitamin uh, pack makes what makes sense. Got it, got it. Awesome. Um, So there's so many things I want to ask you about, but I would love to know about your personal morning routine. What does that look like for you? Well, you're one of the big advocates for making sure you do activity in the morning because it affects everything else that happens during your day and your sleep the next night. So uh, when I get up in the morning, uh, I do a seven minute workout. And it's seven minutes because I know I'll do it. And then I can think to myself all day long, what a great person I am. Oh my goodness, I did my workout already. <laughs> How organized I am, exactly. I give myself rotator cuff injuries, patting myself on the back. <laughs> but uh, the workout is simple. It's, it's based on uh, sun salutation, which is a, <clears throat> an, a traditional way that people in yoga would wake up. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and anyone can just, you know, I actually have a seven, it's called the seven minute workout. I've got it on my website. I first did it on the Oprah show years ago. Mm-hmm. And of course, as you know, Oprah was my mentor, my partner on what, my current endeavor. Dr. Oz show. So we, it's on all of our websites, but it's a sun salutation with push ups and sit ups and a little stretch to go along with it. And I can do the whole thing in seven minutes. And I say that for, with, with uh, great gusto because I don't want to work out in the morning any more than any of you listening do. But if I only have a few minutes and I can start in two minutes in, I'm already thinking, hey, I'm almost done. I got five yeah. minutes left. And the bigger challenge for all of you is are you willing to admit that you are so disorganized, so discombobulated Mm. in your life that you can't carve out seven minutes in the morning? I mean, really? 
please? So that's the that's probably the biggest takeaway. Take those seven minutes. Frankly, just stretch and have mindfulness for seven minutes. Sit in the toilet, put the lid down. Don't go to the bathroom. Just be calm. Anything like that that'll get you centered first thing in the morning is going to help you. And that's my morning routine. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So you have a new podcast. You I'm trying to follow your footsteps. They're big ones. Uh, I, you know, I, I love my TV show. Uh, and there are some conversations that work better in a podcast form, especially when I get a lot of big time controversial people on and you got to talk for a bit. To, I really dive into what's going down. Right. And a lot of these topics really do well in the medium that you pioneered in podcasts. So uh, it's launching. It just launched actually. It's uh, I'm very proud of it. Uh, I'm uh, working with people that I adore dearly. And it, it it's an opportunity for me to call people that I'm really curious about, mm -hmm. lock them in a room with me for mm -hmm. a cage fight a verbal cage fight <laughs> for a half hour and tease out stuff that really make a difference. So whether it's the biggest unanswered questions in the universe, literally consciousness, what is the, what is it at its core? Yeah. Uh, what are the building blocks of the universe? Those are sort of big cosmic questions. Or what is it that's holding us back from being the person we can become? And what are the big action steps to get us there? These are all the themes that I want to touch on. And so it's a you know, supercharged effort to get people engaged in their own life. And I hope you all enjoy it. Wow, definitely. Of course, we'll put the links to everything in the show notes for you guys to connect and definitely check out the new podcast, Dr. Oz. You know he brings the goods. So final question for you. What is the model that you're here to set for other people with the way that you live your life personally? I think it's about kindness. And I, I say that knowing that a lot of times we rely on our intellect or our passion. Passion happens to be my probably modus operandi. People know me for being a passionate person. I care a lot. But you can you can do things kindly or not kindly. And that intent becomes evident over time. And as a backup hint, it's always possible to be kind. So no matter what you got to say, even if it sounds difficult, even if it's challenging, even if you got to say it because it's the truth and it hurts, if you say it with kindness, people get over that. Yeah. Love it, love it. And this is something just to, it echoes from your team. This is something I've heard from them. He's just a good guy. He's a kind person. And the people around you love you for a reason. And I just want to thank you so much for, you know, stepping out of the, the comfort zone and really getting this information out for people. Even with all of the, the tensions that might surround you, thank you so much for being a leader. I really do appreciate well, it. God bless you. God awesome. bless Thank you very much. Everybody, Dr. Oz. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the show. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And there was so many great takeaways and insights. One of them that really jumped out is when he talked about people who snack on nuts is one of those things that you would think looking at it as being a food that's high in fat and high in calories that we might see an increase in weight gain, but it's just not the case. And for example, so I went and dug into the research on this. In one study published in the International Journal of Obesity and Related Metabolic Disorders tracked the results of 65 overweight or obese individuals when they were on a low calorie diet supplemented with almonds, so that's one category, versus a low calorie diet supplemented with complex carbs. And here's what they found. The folks consumed an equal amount of calories, protein, cholesterol, and fat. All right. At the end of a 24-week period, those on the almond diet who had included almonds had a 62% greater reduction in weight and BMI, 50% greater reduction in waist circumference, and a 56% greater reduction in fat mass. That is insane. All right. Same amount of calories, but they're eating more nuts. They're including nuts in their diet and seeing this kind of transformation versus eating complex carbs to fill that space. That tells you when we're talking about how calories are not the thing. If you think about even the science of calories, it's a very kind of ghostly thing to talk about, right? There's so many different holes in that thinking that, you know, if we just manage calories or the caloric density of food, that we're going to be able to manage our weight. What constitutes those calories really matters a lot and what it does to your hormones, what it does to your neurotransmitters is very different in what a handful of almonds does or Brazil nuts or pistachios does to metabolism versus a Chocodile or a Twinkie. All right, shout out to the Chocodile. That was my jam, all right, the cream filling. What is it even made of, right? What is it made of? Mystery filling, all right, it's mystery filling. Avoid the mystery filling. 
eat some more nuts, include those in your diet. I think that was one of the big takeaways. And by the way, so a lot of times, so nuts also, they can be pretty expensive. So for myself and my family, we get a lot of our things from like things like Brazil nuts, which are great for uh, testosterone, selenium, incredibly high in selenium. Uh, I get those from Thrive Market. Also pine nuts, pistachios. We're saving 25 to 50%, which would pay at a health food store. And here's the thing, they're organic. Because you, you deal with the same issues if you're eating pesticide, fungicide, herbicide, sprayed almonds, right? You don't want to consume that stuff. So if you're going and getting the better options, sometimes it could be more expensive. But with Thrive Market, they're taking that out of the equation. I highly, highly encourage you. I've saved, I already tracked this already. They've got a tracker for you that tells you how much money you save. I'm on pace to save about $700 this year in my grocery bill simply by getting a lot of things that I might get from someplace like Whole Foods or your local health food store from Thrive Market. Again, 25 to 50% off the retail price you'd be paying. And here's the thing, they have categories. They curate things for you from the best companies. So they've got paleo category, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, whatever it is you're looking for, non-GMO, fair trade. They have those things curated for you from the very best companies and it helps with shopping and making things simple. All right, we love them so much. And here's the thing as well. You're not just getting 25 to 50% off. By going to thrivemarket.com forward slash model health, in addition to the 25% off to 50% off you're already getting, you get an additional 25% off your entire cart for your first purchase. All right, thrivemarket.com forward slash model health. All right, model health together is one word. Additional 25% off your entire cart plus you get free shipping, all right? They're gonna send it to you for free, all right? 30 day free membership to Thrive Market, all right? And I want you to make sure you keep that membership because it's just gonna keep paying you back over and over and over again to get your family the very best foods, the very best personal care products, home cleaning products without all these crazy chemicals and things that are we're finding more and more are dangerous to human health, all right? So they've got, this is a great place to get, you know, your nuts, snacks, you can get your, this is where I get my coconut oil. This is where we get, you know, non-perishable items, nut butters, uh, snacks for the kids. Again, personal care products. Head over there, check them out, all right? Thrivemarket.com forward slash model health. And again, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, one of the things that he ended with was talking about his model is demonstrating kindness. And I, I really can't stress that enough, how I'm seeing this in these world-class folks is this thread of giving, is this thread of kindness as well. And just wanting to go the extra mile for other people just because they care and it's the right thing to do. This is why we're all together here and as, as a part of this community is to not just take care of our own health and well-being, which we need to do that first, but extending that out and doing a little bit more and giving a little bit more to the people that we care about, right? Showing up as the best version of ourselves. And that is when we can really create true change. All right, so again, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. We've got some incredible stuff coming up for you, so make sure to stay tuned. Take care, have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon.